So you may be able to tell I'm out in Las Vegas. I'm here for the NAB show. The Blackmagic design team have just announced DaVinci Resolve Public Beta version 20. Now in there is a fantastic tool called Chroma Warp. I use the Color Warper all the time and this is an additional element to that tool. I'm going to show you in this episode exactly how to use it in depth and show you just how you're going to get these fantastic results. So let's go and take a look. Just to show you what's going on with color management first, I've got this shot here which is Arri Log C4. This is going up to DaVinci Wide Gamut using a CST. You can use regular color management if you want to. And then we're back down to 709 here. And all the work we're going to do is going to be in DaVinci Wide Gamut on this node here. So let me just change the view so we can see this a little bit clearer. So we've still got the traditional Chroma Luma and our Hue Saturation Color Warper. And how these work is you choose the amount of vectors that you'd like to work in down here. So the lower the number, the larger the selection will be. Now the new Chroma Warp, you just simply select what you want and move and it's really organically manipulates the color. Let me show you, if I change this background here, if I wanna make that more of a green hue, you just pull over here. I'm using this here is the normal mode. This one is point to point. This here does isolation. This is to select those isolation points. So you can delete them if you want and you can really create some fantastic looks. And then we've got the Chroma range and exposure. So you can see that it's done a really nice job of that. Now let me show you how I would do that on the regular color warper. So I'm going to do a new version and I'm going to reset this. And what I'm going to do is select the regular color warper. I'm going to select that area once again and let's move that now over to the same sort of area. And it does a fantastic job as you'll see, but let me show you something else. So let's go back to our chroma warp version. And what you'll notice is you're keeping more of the original colors on this color chart. Let me show you. So already we're getting a slightly more pleasing result. Now we could go back to our color warper and make some more selections in here and start moving it around, but I wanna show you another tool. So I'm out in Vegas working very hard, getting all the latest news for you. If you like this sort of stuff, hit the subscription button for me, hit the notification bell, and let's get on with this episode. So back to the chroma warper, let's reset that. In fact, just to show you before I do that, you can make multiple selections as well in here. So we could select the foliage here, for example, and start adding multiple strokes in here. Okay, so you can build this up to really start creating defined looks. And then what you can do is increase or decrease the chroma range that's been included. All right, you can see that orange line around there, increasing and decreasing. If there was a particular hue that you wanted to protect, you can use this isolation tool here and just select it and that takes it out of the range. But I'm gonna show you another tool now. I'm gonna reset this. And instead of using the normal mode, I'm gonna click on here and use this one, which is called point to point. Now, what I'm gonna do is take the same idea. We're gonna take the blue background, but this time I wanna make it into more a orange range. So I'm gonna move it over here. And what it does is it goes from exactly the selection that we've taken and takes it to our new selection. Now, let me show you what would have happened if I'd have done that on the normal tool. We go over and it's including all of this range here. Now, this is including our skin tone clearly. So this would be great if you want to do a big color move, but what we want to do is a bit more isolated. So we could be in here and just start deselecting areas like this but a much more efficient way is to use the point to point editor. So we're gonna to go to click on here, go to our new target point, and you see that we're retaining so much of the colors in the original color chart here. So this is a really great way of doing that. Let's take a look at how that would work in the regular color warper. So we're gonna go back to here, I'm gonna reset this one. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing. So it does a great job of it. Let's click on here and we're gonna move it all over to that sort of yellow way over there. But look at the color chart, We've, we're, we're including a lot more information. So we'd have to start being very selective about what we're moving here and pulling back. But let me show you something else. If I go into full screen mode, this is with the color warper, the original color warper. And this is with the chroma warper. So you can see it's a much more pleasing look because we're retaining more of the original colors. So there's a very slight bit of bleed going on here. So let's just come out of that mode. Let's increase our chroma range and that should tighten that up nicely for us. And there we go, that's all gone. So this is gonna be a fantastic tool. I think a combination of being able to go point to point and in the normal mode, but isolating selected areas is gonna give us a fantastic look. Now, the other thing you can do in here is adjust the exposure. So once you're in there, we can adjust exposure. That's gonna help us give that nice sort of dense look if we need to. So I'm sure you'll agree the new Chrome Warp is absolutely fantastic. I think a combination of the natural mode and the point to point is going to give us some fantastic results. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.